Welcome to this edition of Lens on the Logos with me, Dr. Dylan Bergen. Lens on the Logos is an educational program on which we draw on the fields of ethics, philosophy, anthropology, psychology, sociology, and science. We engage an old book that is relevant to current affairs so that we may understand how to apply its truths and principles to our everyday life and living. Thank you for joining me for this edition. Welcome to Lens on the Logos. I am Pastor Bergen, I'm Dr. Dillon Bergen Harmony, uh, the pastor of Harmony Tabernacle in Brooklyn, New York. And uh, we, we are so happy that you invite us into your homes and uh, wherever you are viewing from at this moment. Um, today, my guest, I have two illustrious guests. They are from the wonderful island of um, St. Vincent and the Grenadines, great country of um, St. Vincent and the Grenadines, one of the um, small island state of the Caribbean called Home of the Blessed. So we are in for quite a, a cultural treat um, today and uh, very likely you'll see this program in two parts. Um, we, we'll have a first section and then the continuation, you know, as part of the one interview. But I'm, I'm pleased to introduce to you today. First on my left is uh, Mr. Clive Bishop. Um, those of you who are from the island of St. Vincent and the Grenadines may know him well as, as Bishai. And uh, he's, he's very much into the cultural affairs. He's uh, an agronomist by profession. And for those of you who don't know what that big word means, like someone asked me recently, what is that again? And I said to them, these are the professional people who deal with the lands and teach us how to do farming the right way and understand cycles in farming and understand all the, the technicalities about the lands and all that sort of thing. So he's, that's, that's, that's who he is. And um, he's uh, political in the sense that he pays a lot of attention to political affairs and um, give analysis and, and so forth and, and work with different people, different groups in pulling together networks and groups in order to advance the cause of a people and so you'll be hearing a lot um, from him. I'll tell you what the main topic is in a moment. And on my right is Inola Maguire. Uh, she's actually our, our, one of our business experts in that she's a woman who has credentials in business education. And uh, she has a bachelor's in business education. She has a master's. She's a teacher. And um, you'll see how that factors in again into our main discussion today because we're going to be talking about the Garifuna people and one of the things I've discovered along the way is that many Garifunas are teachers. Somehow it just seems as if it's natural for um, descendants of Garifunas to be teachers, instructors, leaders and pioneers. Miss um, Inola Maguire, she's traveled widely. She's a conference facilitator. She's um, done work and studies in places like England and Finland and so forth. And um, she's an activist too, very much involved in many of the political affairs and organizing of people for their own advancement. So welcome um, to the program, Mr. Clive Bishop. Uh, so I may call him Brother Clive, Mr. Bishop, Bishai, same person. And, and many of you who may know him would readily identify him by both his name and by his um, appearance as um, one who uh, is very much, and by his knowledge, as one is very much involved in the culture um, of his people. And of course, um, I'll be engaging both of them. So I welcome him and I welcome Miss um, Inola Maguire. Let's begin today. Our main topic today is um, the Garifuna people. Um, the Garifuna people uh, are also sometimes referred to as the Garifuna nation because there is a lot of movements on the way, conversations, discussions, um, and, and uh, paperwork to establish the Garifunas as a nation, not just as a group of people, you know, an, an ethnic group, but to establish them as a nation because of all that, um, the things that are in place to qualify them as such. So first of all, I want to ask Mr. Clyde Bishop to talk to us about the Garifunas. Who are they? I mean, what does this name represent? I mean, what are, what are we talking about when we use this word Garifuna? Thank you, my Garifuna brother, <laughs> Bogin, Sister Ainola, my relative, blood relative, Garifuna. Greetings to the nation. 
in the name of our ancestors, our proud ancestors, who came way, way from the land of West Africa in the 12th and 13th century across the Atlantic when the Europeans were afraid to cross the channel, mm -hmm. came in hundreds, in thousands, and some of them settled on that beautiful island called St. Vincent, which they call Euromain, mm -hmm. home of the blessed. So who are the Garifuna? Do not take what you read in the history of the European. They have a way of presenting it in their own version. What I know and what I'm going to tell you comes from my lifelong experience, comes from my grandparents, some of them who I know as grandparents come from their kit and kin, their generation, comes from my reading of certain writings, come from the speaking of a veritable sage called, who both I know and I know, Dr. Earl Kirby mm -hmm. of good memory, the best anthropologist and archaeologist we ever had in St. Vincent in modern times. May the most high bless his soul. And comes from the writings of people like Dr. Edgar Adams, still alive, a Vincentian, who was the first person to write research and write about the voyages of King Abu Bakari II, Emperor Abu Bakari II of Mali, from the Mali Empire in the 12th and 13th centuries. And that is where the origin of the people who came to be known as the Garifuna came from. Now let me, let me ask, um, I know they are also called the Kalinagos. Is it, is it the same thing? No. When you hear Garifuna, and sometimes, yeah, sometimes you hear Kalinago. I mean, is it these the same are two thing? distinct indigenous groups. The Kalinago are well-respected people. The Kalinagos are the yellow-skinned people who came from the Orinoco Basin. They arrived a little before the Garifuna people in the Winwood Islands maybe a hundred years before, according to what I know. But no. they and the Garifuna people, the African people who, when they left Mali, were not called Garifuna. They left Mali off their own steam in an expedition which brought a lot of food, planting material, both male and female, live animals across the Atlantic. So, so it's established that um, the, the, the roots of the Garifuna um, people is Mali. Yes, Africa, uh, West Africa. Now, I read somewhere... And, Original. And, and, and correct me if, I'm, if, 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 if this is wrong. But I read somewhere where it says the Garifunas were really a mix of um, Arawak, um, African, and, and some Indians that were in the general right, area. Right, I'm, I'm that, right. Kins, Kins, Kins and those areas. Well, the, the, the Kalinago, or as, as the European call them in a derogatory way, yellow caribs, mm -hmm. the word caribs meaning savages. Right. So when you hear yellow caribs, they mean yellow savage. When you hear black caribs, black, who black they call savages. the caribs, they mean black savages. That mm -hmm. is how they referred to the indigenous people. They came, according to what I know, between 900 and 1200 from the Guyanas. Of ah. the coast. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the African people met with them and they never had any war, they never had any major dispute, mm -hmm. any interracial dispute. Of course, they would have quarrels and so on. Right, right. Not anything to lead to any like no major genocide, falling no, out and, and one They, they harmonize, mm -hmm. right? Their cultures fused together. Mm -hmm. And the cross breeding of them in St. Vincent is what gave rise to the Garifuna. Ah. Because the African people, it, they take note of this, they never, because if you look at the geography, when you come across the Atlantic, Barbados is the first island, but because Barbados is so flat, the relief, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. boats don't normally see Barbados until you pass the coast. Right. But St. Vincent is mountainous. And when you look at the latitude, St. Vincent is more logical for a lot of ships to come. Well, all the ships didn't come to St. Vincent and others. So who came to St. Vincent? Many of them settled there. They didn't settle in St. Lucia, they didn't settle in Dominica. The Kalinagos, on the other hand, were right up the coast. And so in history, when you get from the Windward Passage, which is above about between 
Guadeloupe and, and Dominica and Antigua up there. South of that was called the poison arrow curtain. Mm. Because the indigenous people, their main weapon was the arrow. Right, right, uh-huh. And uh-huh. they dipped the tips of the arrow in a poison they got from the cassava, curare. Mm-hmm. Right? But they also found out that to cure the wounds from this poison was the root of a plant which became known as the arrow root. Uh-huh. Which was the most but that's where that name came from. That the was the most root. indigenous mm-hmm. plant in the region. Mm-hmm. And it was food and medicine for all the indigenous people. Still mm-hmm. is today. Beautiful. Let me turn to Miss um, Inola Maguire. I'm coming back to you because we, we're having a, um, quite an interaction here. What, what intrigued you about the Garifuna people? And, and how, do you, how does all of this connect to you? Because, you know, the stories we get often is not the correct, as, as, as Brother Bishai pointed out earlier on. The story you read, depending on the, what version, see the, the, the European version is very often different from the authentic version. I mean, you hear this, and, and how do you connect it, and, and, and what's your interest and, and passion about the Garifuna people? Because you're, you're very passionate about the, the, your people yourself. Yeah. You know, as a child growing up, you know, I used to listen to my grandmother talking stories, but in one of our history books, History of St. Vincent, it tells you about when the people were shipped from the main island to Bariso and Batawea, which is two islands in the Grenadines, and they were sent to Central America. Then you know, you hear stories and say, oh, what are those people doing now? Mm-hmm. So from there, and you read, and you know, then the story stop. Mm-hmm. So when I came to New York, I was talking with a lady, she used to be my immediate supervisor, and she knew a little about it. I said, oh, and then I met a gentleman uh, who was one of our students, he had a book that an anthropologist spent some years in Honduras and Mm -hmm. she wrote the book. Mm -hmm. And all of the things that I know happening in St. Vincent, I read about it in the book. So those people kept up the tradition with the the Mm Sava and the Mm Arrow Road. But I always think about the people. And then some of the people I saw like in the Bronx, because the Bronx had a lot of people right. from I the think they have the, the, the largest the, the, am I right the, the Bronx has the largest yes, right. concentration of Garifunas um, outside of I mean in, in the world I mean outside of um, Central, say, America. Honduras, Central yeah. America that's true that's yeah. right okay. so uh, then you know I saw this gentleman I'm saying you know what if he goes to Sandy Bay in St. Vincent he can fit in you know like I see. skin tone yes, and yes. everything and, and he would probably be the the, the, um, the, the yellow well, so yeah, yeah, they, yeah, they, no, but there's something about the skin it's, it's, tone. It's, it's not, you see, they don't have many of the yellow people in Winston again because of the infuser. Right, right. You have, you have a, a, a mixture, mm-hmm. right? But the African gene is dominant. So, Garifuna, you, you, you see the Africanness one time. I got you. But mm-hmm. there's also the Kalinagoness in, in people. Right, in the the air 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 I see. Yeah. Right. So you saw this fella and you figure, oh, he could fit into Sandy Bay. Now, Sandy Bay is an area, how do you describe that? It's, it, we used to call it the, 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 the area where the Caribs, Carib country, Caribs are con- concentrated. Right, right. Carib I, don't, I, don't, I don't really like doing that. I don't like the term either. But that is how we... Most people say this one identify because it's like a, a plantation or like a, a reservation, a, a, a reservation, reservation right. where you find the predominantly the Kalinago and they were sent there after 1773, which we will come to a little later. Okay, okay. Now, I must tell you, uh, I do not know if you're aware of the Happy Land fire in the Bronx about 26 years ago. Mm-hmm. When that happened, you know, they, it was in the newspaper that these people, Garifuna descendants, ah. and at least 80. Maybe over 80 mm-hmm. bodies went back to Central America. I see. Because they were victims of that fire. Right, right. Mm-hmm. So, you know, that allowed people to get more involved in learning about the Garifuna. And when it was Hurricane Mitch that destroyed Honduras, mm-hmm. I was attending Lehman College, and one of my classmates, he was from Honduras, and he said, Where are you from? I said, St. Vincent. And he said, do you know about the Garifuna? I said, yes. And then he and I became, you know, chubby chubby. Right, right. And we talk a, a lot about it, you know, and mm-hmm. it was good. And at the time, I think St. Vincent Prime Minister was James Mitchell, and mm-hmm. he went to Andrews. So, I see. Yeah, yeah, to visit him. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. that in itself, you know, kept me thinking. The sort of conscious of, of all right, this. It's like right, you're always right. running into the, 
the, the, the name and the people. Yeah, and whenever I met someone and they say, oh, I'm from Belize, I say, you know, you, you know and they say, oh, my people are from St. Vincent, so I felt mm-hmm. good. That, you know, I felt like ambassador. Yes, <laughs> yes. When I worked in Belize, they, they treated me very well too. In fact, one lady had had us um, fly to, to, uh, to one end of the island, Punta Gorda, mm-hmm. um, because she just wanted to connect. And she, she the minute they, they hear you from the Garifunas, in Belize here, you're from St. Vincent. I mean, it's royal treatment because they just connect with their roots. And the interesting thing, and, and you could talk about this, the interesting thing is that the people outside of St. Vincent and the Grenadines um, have a, a greater consciousness of the culture, uh-huh. of the people, yes. and the language. Because we don't, we don't speak the language really true, true, um, true, in, 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 in no, the they homeland, remember but they, exactly. they're very much onto it. They speak the language. Well, I will tell you something. The history they fed us with, I never swallowed it. Mm. And I dem- never swallowed it because I was as conscious as I am now. Mm-hmm. I never swallowed it because the spirit of my ancestors refused mm-hmm. to allow me to swallow it. Right, right. Because they were speaking about the boat which overturned in 1675, a slave ship mm-hmm. between Beckway and St. Vincent, and the most of them swam ashore. Yes, I saw that too. I, I read that somewhere. <laughs> now, in my professional training, I've trained as an, a social, apart from being an agronomist, I did a postgraduate course where I had to do a lot of anthropological development work. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, you do, you do political geography, right. you do social geography, you do mm-hmm. economic history. Mm-hmm. So you learn to question origin, things. You do origin of plants mm-hmm. and of cultures and so on. Mm-hmm. And I also happen to have studied in Martinique and Guadeloupe, which is France and the Caribbean. Mm-hmm. And the French have a much clearer account of the history of the Garifuna people than the Asians. Yes, I saw that somewhere. Because the Garifuna too. people accommodated the French on St. Vincent as tenants. Ah. They rented land, mm-hmm. especially on the Western, the leeward coast, where our grandparents came from, Mm -hmm. which is the western coast to plant indigo, tobacco, and short staple cotton, which we call Marigaland. So we were very, we were very um, um, uh, uh, hospitable, and we were landlords from early. We were 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 hospitable to the French, Mm -hmm. the British, the Spanish tried to be um, hostile to us, Mm -hmm. and they couldn't go with us. It is recorded in history. There's a book I want, I would like to, when I get back in St. Winston, probably donate one to the Gary Funa community. It's called Britain's Black Death ah. by Professor Hilary Beckles. It chronicles the struggles of the Kalinago and the Gary Funa people in the entire Winwood Islands. Mm-hmm. The entire Lesser Antilles. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Right? And the Spanish and the French decided it's better to concentrate not. Mm-hmm. Ah, than to attack the Garifuna and Kalinago people in the south, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. especially the Garifuna people in St. Vincent. So the French developed a policy of working with, mm-hmm. right, renting land. So right, the French, right. That is why we still have a lot of French names. Yes, in yes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But the French and the British were war internationally. So when the British defeated the French, the British would claim what land yes, they had from yes. the French in the region. Mm-hmm. That is why the British came into the region and into St. Vincent. The British came about 200 years after the French and the Spanish. I see. But it was the British that eventually um, um, got rid of... of, of, of yeah, of, because of they, were, they, they were very greedy. Okay. Right? So St. Vincent never had any European hostility mm-hmm. until the middle of the 17th century, the end of the 17th century. Okay. When the British came from Barbados and started attacking the wanted lands. Uh-huh. Now, this is, this is, this, all of this is making sense because, you know, in Barbados, um, Barbados has been called Little, um, Little England. England for a long time because yeah. that's where a lot of the, the, the British um, aristocrats not only lived but set up the schools for their children and so on. So, so you're saying to me, the British basically they, they, they already had an outpost in Barbados, so it was easy yes, to move yes. over into Saint Vincent. Second, second Vincent. colony they settled, right? Saint Kitts being the first. So they basically kind of wage war on our people from nearby Barbados. 
that's where the the, the, the strength of of the, the um, aggression came from. Yes. Let me just read. Let me just read a little bit. Permit me to read something. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. The English, initiating their colonizing missions during the early 17th century, had a clear choice. They could confront the Spanish north of the poison arrow curtain, mm. or the Calinago south of it. Either way, they expected to encounter considerable armed resistance. They chose the latter, partly because of the perception that the Kalinagos were the weaker, but also because of the belief that they were the common enemy of all Europeans. Uh huh. This works for them starting. Yes, yes, early. yes, yes. Right. But what I'm getting from this too, which is interesting, is that um, the the the. Garifunas were always a resistant people. Always. And we, we always we were always proud resistors of the of, of, of Anglo um aggression. Isn't that interesting? That I mean we, we always resisted the the the, the, um, the, the the white um person telling us what to do and how to do because we, we somehow we didn't feel as if it was for our best interest. Yeah, there's a there's a there's a rec the recorded statement that in 1765, the, the English admiral came to St. Vincent. They had just defeated the French mm -hmm. in a war in the North Atlantic, somewhere off in Canada. And he came and he said to then young chief, young chief, mm -hmm. Chatelier, and the other elders, we, we are claiming this land in the name of our king. Mm -hmm. And it is reported that the young chief, very young chief at that time, mm -hmm. I don't know what age was the chief, said to him, which king? We know of no king other than our mm -hmm. old king from mm -hmm. where we came from. Right, right. And we worship no one else. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that angered him. Right. And they went back to Barbados and sent a raiding party, mm -hmm. which was severely Defeat. Yes, yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. But by the English having all this wealth mm -hmm. in terms of merchants in Britain, the Royal Society, right? And the there's another, I can't remember the name right now. I remember it anyway. They put money, all these merchants put money together mm -hmm. and built up a massive fleet. Ah. And so they send in a bigger Cans, army, right? And as, force. They, as they defeated the French, they had more people to spare to send down to the region, right? And because of the fertility of Saint Vincent and Grenadines, mm -hmm. the fertility of Saint Vincent and Grenadines was the paramount thing why the indigenous African people and the Kalinago people settled there. Uh -huh. It was a land of wood, food, fresh water, and rainbow. Rainbow still mm -hmm. has the most beautiful rainbows in the region. That's interesting, mm -hmm. right? Now, now, how does the wood fit? What, what, how do we understand wood, a land of wood? Because um, when you talk about wood, we're now talking about a lot of forest, but also, as far as I know, Saint Vincent has never really um, pride itself in in say, lumber or production of 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 things with wood. Well, except that that we have very good craftsmen, you know, who do the the, 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 the carvings and the drums and the parrots and so forth? Very interesting question. I'm glad you asked. Okay. Mm -hmm. St. Vincent has certain types of wood trees that are excellent for boat making. Ah. I'm Pastor Bergen. You are watching Lens on the Logos. Uh -huh. The gourmet tree mm -hmm. was a tree and we had a, 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 a um, fig. Mm -hmm. We had some trees, yes, that they would cut the whole trunk and hollow it out, the whole entire trunk. Yes, yes. So you didn't have to fit any pieces and make mm -hmm. a canoe. I learned that in, um, in, in, um, in, in high school history. Right. That um, they, they did that. They would the whole big tree and they would dig it out. Oh, these trees mm -hmm. predated any human settlement. They were there thousands of years ago. I see. Creation. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, you understand? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Because St. Vincent was a volcanic island that unlike Barbados, as the geologists would tell us, was never ever submerged, totally submerged. I see. All is an island, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. from whenever. 
the okay. Almighty created you. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So it's always there. I see. We didn't emerge from under any right, right. Tree. So we don't because have most, any most islands, most islands, um, through through volcanic eruptions, the lava comes up. It, it right, but we're always it, above I water see. level. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Right, and our volcano is not like mm-hmm. most of the volcanoes that throw that would rock. Yes, you know, we throw ash. Right. So we make but soil. That's part of why the soil is so fertile. Right. Right. So St. Vincent was a self-sustaining island. You didn't have to go anywhere. It had mm-hmm. food coming to the wood. The only inhabitants in Barbados used to come to St. Vincent for wood and water. Ah. So there was a, you could say there was a time of export yeah, of the wood exactly. to nearby Barbados. Right. Now, the interesting thing is that at one time, and I know this from growing up when we, we did a lot of um, farming and so on, at one time, um, some of the, the most prosperous farmers in St. Vincent, certainly in my general area, uh-huh. were, were um, not, not farmers, um, traffickers. Yes. They uh, made their money from taking food to Barbados. Yeah, that is a true. I mean, now it's a lot of it is going to Trinidad, but a lot of it back then, they went to Barbados. So that's interesting that this went back a long time. Let I know to tell you where our grandparents came from. Okay. I am reminding you that you are fearfully and wonderfully made. God has a purpose for your life. I pray you'll discover what that purpose is. God bless you. Our grandparents lived in Wallaboo. Mm -hmm. And in 1902, when the volcano erupted, they were relocated with their mother, which was our great-grandmother. Thank you for watching this edition of Lens on the Logos. Go out today and do something good for someone. Let the Lord be the wind under your wings. Enjoy life. And whatever is happening in your life, yes, whatever is happening in your life, remember, don't worry. And reach out to us at www.harmonytabernacle.org. That's harmonytabernacle.org. Visit us on the web also at pastorbergen.com. That's www pastorbergin.com. Bergin spelled B-U-R-G-I-N. Thanks for watching.